What's your routine like now in your new house, new place? Are you able to bring all of the routines you established in your Dallas backyard to your Virginia home? Yeah. Yeah. So basically like my routine is when I wake up, I meditate um, right out of bed. Um, and then I go right into the porch and I do it right away in the morning. And, you know, it, all the benefits that we've talked about before too, with like, um, you know, obviously like it, it's great for waking up, but also like the benefits of like, you know, the dopamine rush and, and honestly just that, um, that alertness and that, uh, honestly, that it sets an edge to the day. Like I've talked to so many people over the course of like the last year, year and a half about like other guys that have like done the, like the forge or just done the cold sub therapy in general, um, in the morning and how much of a difference that impacts their day. And, um, you know, I don't think I could ever not do it and uh, feel the same, honestly. So, um, but no, hop in the forge and then obviously I, you know, go to the facility and everything and do my routine there. But, um, but no, I think, I think it just sets the bar of like, cause every day it doesn't matter like how much you could like be prepared. Like it's that same mental challenge in the morning. And then once you complete that mental challenge, it's like, that's probably like, that's the hardest thing by far to do is to do it like right out of bed. A hundred percent of the time that huge fast, like it is a huge task, like right out of bed. Like when you're like yawning, like walking over there <laughs> and, um, but no, I mean, it's, it's, it's done so much incredible things. I think even for like my mental health in general, um, I've seen so many, like I felt so many like different like avenues that I've gone through, especially, you know, like professional athlete and how much like strict schedules we have and to be focused and alert as soon as you walk in the building and to have that edge, you know, I think, I think it speaks a lot of volume. Honestly. It seems to me like it is a much harder thing, Tyler, when it's like fourth and short yardage and you know, the play is a quarterback sneak and everybody is going to be on your head. As soon as you snap the ball, that seems like a hard thing from my perspective. And yet you're telling me, oh, no, uh, the ice bath, that's really hard. Are these <laughs> two connected for you? No, I mean, I think I think the biggest part about it is to, I think it, I think it handles, um, so a lot of times, like when I was in, I think it was like in college, um, one of my buddies, he he did like full body, like in the, in the cold tub. And I was like, man, like, I, I got to try that one time, you know, I got to like try that. And. And I did, but it was so, it was like, like super difficult. And, you know, when I first got into the NFL, I got into like a lot of like meditation and the power of the mind and just starting learning, learn about like your, you know, your subconscious mind and your conscious mind and um, just like different, like competitive edges that you're looking for in life, but also like your career to see, you know, see how, like my biggest thing is like, I always like, you know, tell people or if they ask, like, you know, what do you like want to be or whatever, if this avenue or that, or like your job or in life or whatever, it's just like to be the best version of yourself. So like, I'm always trying to like, kind of, you know, you know, there's so many stuff, there's so much stuff online and like so many different discoveries and, um, especially with the forge and like how, like it kind of came about, but I think how it sets you up is like, you know, it's such a mental game. Because it's, it's to me, like, it's, it's like when they say the phrase, like, it's not that simple, but it really is. It's like to get just, just getting there, showing up. And once you're in it, like the first third, like 15 to 30 seconds are the hardest part. But once you like start to breathe through that and like your first time and like, there's time, like, it's so funny. Like when you see like friends come over, like family and like they tried it and like, you know, they, they, you know, it's, it's like that, like you have to really like dive into it and really be like mentally prepared when you first start. Right. And, but once you like do it once, you're just like, well, I did that once. Like, why can't I do it every day? And it's that like mental challenge of like, I'm going to do it every day in the morning. And like, and I'll be honest, like the first time I got it, like it was tough to do it like every morning, like, and, and there was days where like, I was just like, if you're like a little bit running for late for work, you're just like, no, like I, I don't have time. I, I got traffic, blah, blah, blah. All these excuses go in your mind. Right. And I feel like it was very um, much so that it gets you to, to a point where your mind does want to create that excuse because it knows what challenges is in front of it. And, you know, when you compare fourth and short to that, 
obviously like there's a little bit of a difference, but I would say like when you first wake up in the morning, that challenge of doing it right away versus like if you do it in the afternoon when you get home and you have more time or if it's not like in your schedule, like, but then like all of a sudden you have this preparation, like you want to be like, all right, I'm going to go home and do this. And like, you know, you want to like feel it out. But the the best way to do is like, it's like when the people say like, when you're afraid to jump, that's when you jump. Right. Or like that phrase. And it's like, it's truly that simple. Like, you don't, I don't think anymore. I just go in it. Like, I just don't even think I just literally just walk over there and like, you have that one song that you listen to, or like you have that, like, you know, like my thing is like, I want to be in there for three to four minutes. So like, you know, I have a song that's like in between or like five minutes or whatever. And once you go in it and you just like, you just stay calm. And I think like what helped me right away, cause it was hard to like stay in it for like three to five minutes at first. And what helped me was just closing your eyes. If you just close your eyes, you don't think about the ice. You don't like the, the psychological effect that of like ice in front of you or like the jets going or, <laughs> or whatever. Right. So like it has that, um, that psychological effect where if you just close your eyes, I always tell people, I'm like, it's just a sensation, but like, if you can't see it, then what really is it? Right. So like you can play the, as much as your mind can play games with you. I think you can play games with your own mind too and manipulate it to what you want. So, um, in that case, that's what, that's what I've always done. So like, once you go in, like you just close your eyes for the first, like, you know, 30 to a minute and like you just breathe and all of a sudden time really doesn't exist. And also you just listen to a song and all of a sudden, you know, when you get to the end of that song, you're like, yeah, like I'm good. Like, you know, you're good, you know, like, and it was that simple, but like, there's some days where like, you know, if you're stressed out or if you have like a busy day and everything, like, I think that's why, like, you know, for me, like meditate in the morning kind of sets up for the day where it's like, you set your goals and intentions. And that's part of it, right? The, the mouth, uh, the forge and everything. So, um, but no, it, it definitely took me like a good, like a good amount of time to like really set that routine. But once you set it, you don't, you, you, you literally like psychologically, I feel like day, if I went in one day and didn't go in the next day, like there's a huge difference in my day of how, how much input I can have during the day and what I can accomplish like a hundred percent, like. So. You are seeing so many things that resonate. They're the same as my experience. They're the same. It doesn't really matter who I talk to, uh, at what level. They say the same things. Um, but we met in Dallas at Priocon, and you yep. told me uh, the same thing you're telling me now, that it's a real mental lift for you to be doing your Morozco. And so I started thinking, because, you know, I'm an engineer and I'm a math guy, how would I find by what statistic, you know, how would this mental edge show up on uh, Tyler's like NFL stats? So I, I went and I looked these up and I'm no specialist in football. So I want to ask you this. I noticed you have not been called for a single false start penalty since you got your Moroz call. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, no, I think <laughs> I think uh, it's it's one of those things where like you add layers to to what you're doing. And I think like I think it definitely has an effect on that. I think, um, I think it was, it was, it was part correlation too. Cause like, um, I think it's meditation in the morning. Cause I, I started that last year as well as the Morasco forge as like doing both. But I feel like in general upon like the, the state of mind that you're in, like after the cold tub, like, and I've said this before, but like it, how it sets you up, like there is no mental fatigue. Like that's what I've noticed is that like, I'm not fatigued in the morning. Like I go in the morning and I'm, I'm ready to do stuff. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like, and before it was like, you know, get your cup of coffee, get your caffeine, like, and, and truly like, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say I, I don't, you know, take coffee or like, you know, have caffeine, but like, I don't need it right when I wake up. Cause that's, that's it. Like that's, you know, that's like that, but it's not even that same relevant effect either. Cause it's like, like going in the forge and like having that process and having that like huge, like non-negotiable to do of the day, which is like so weird that I say huge, but it's like, it is a mental stressor, but also like it translates to your day to day upon your memory, like your focus, your, um, your mental drive. And I, and I do think that was a huge part of it. Cause like, um, of just like the routine I had like last year 
during the season and how like I would do it in the mornings and it'd be like on the, on the big work days, I'd be trying to do it um, like in the morning and at night before bed. And I've, I've seen like, I've seen honestly like full effects cause I wear an aura ring. And so it tracks like your REM sleep and your deep sleep. So um, like last year I would do it in the morning and then I would do it at night before bed and I would have really great REM sleep and deep sleep. But in general of that, I think, you know, doing in the morning, like it, to me, like there's never a time where like it was ever too much, but also like you could just see the, the more effects. Cause I still had great deep sleep and REM sleep, but it was like even better. And it was cool. Cause I'm right. I'm like reading online. I, I'm like trying to figure out each and every way you can use the forge to your advantage. Right. And, um, but even like for like lifting purposes, um, I think it was the year before I got the forge, even like with the, just being in like cold water, just to like to not, maybe not, not necessarily like going in the morning, but if you're just dunking in really cold water and submerge it to get up before practice. So like, obviously I didn't have the forge at the facility. So I would just, I would do the forge in the morning, but even like before practice still, like I would like, I just like go dunk head, like head to toe underneath the water and then go lift or practice. And, you know, it's, it's quick and easy. Like, it's not like anything like, you know, crazy. So it was very, uh, it was cool to see the results of that too. Cause like when I went in the forge in the morning and then I had a workout, like probably an hour and a half after or an hour, like when you're doing the warm up, like you're not like tired, like you're really not. And your body's like not sweating as in like, you know, when you like, you, you warm up. And all of a sudden you feel really hot, right? Like you feel really hot, like you're sweating, like, you know, you're kind of out of breath a little bit. Like what I've noticed is that like, after you do that in the morning, like with the forge, like when you do it in your warm up, like you, you feel still like that, uh, that coolness. Like you, you still feel like that, like you're, you might be sweating, but like, you don't really notice it because like your body temperature has, has changed. And like that, that effect that it had in the morning, like you're at a, like a more peak level of performance of how you can like translate that into it. So, um, and you're not like gas tired, like you're not like, you know, I need another water break or like, I, I need a, I need like a couple minutes or I need, a, I need a longer break. Like you're, you're ready to like, you know, build your work capacity. And I've, and that's what I've noticed a lot. And like, um, and I think like, I don't think there's like a, like a specific time for timing wise to do it. But like, for me, it was just, I did it two hours before my workout. So you, you were saying the Cowboys, they don't have a Morosco at their facility, but they must have like whirlpools and ice machines, something like that. Yeah, they have a, they have a cold tub and like, same with, uh, here in Washington. Um, but I don't think it's cold as the Morosco Forge at all. <laughs> Um, and I, and I think it's like a part of it too, is like the temperature, but also like with the ice, there's another factor of like how I said, like psychologically, but also too, like with the stainless steel and then you have like the jets, like, so there's so many different things where it's like, it makes the sensation even like greater. And I think the more you have that, the more like mental toughness, you really do gain from it. Like, and you really do. I mean, if you think about it, like how many people can really like go into like a Moscow forge and be in there for like three minutes in general, not even like professional athletes, but like, right. like you think about like the guys that like, don't like the cold. And it's like, you know, that you, when you, <laughs> you say like a fourth down play to a cold tub, like I guarantee you people would want to play the fourth down, <laughs> you know, they don't want to go, they, they, they don't want to go in the cold water. But like, I think, I think the biggest part, cause it's like, if you asked me the first time, you know, about like going into a cold tub, like, I think the biggest part is just like, well, what are the benefits? And like, even back then, like there wasn't like, may maybe not like crazy studies that really like impact you, but like, <laughs> I think the bigger part is that like, how many excuses you make in your head about like, well, I can do this and this and this, so I don't have to do that or alternatives. But like how I found it is that there, there, for me, there was never an alternative that like had an effect that the forge had on me and how the results kind of stood for itself a hundred percent and um how that stat line you brought up like a hundred percent it correlates 
like I, I would say like the the way you you know and that would be like it was cool it was, it was interesting too because like I, we would have games like last year in Dallas and I'll go in like the cold tub like the night before because <laughs> we would stay at a hotel for the home games and uh and then for the on game day I would go in the cold tub before we go on the bus to the game it would be like Sometimes if it was a night game, I, I would go home, but usually I'm a hotel guy. So like we, I just go to the facility one and stay in the cold tub maybe a little bit longer, but for away games, I would sit in a cold shower and just sit there as long as I possibly could. Or, and then in the morning and then like right before the game, I would hit, I would take another cold shower, like right after you go back in, or right, right, right after you come back in from your own pre warmups, like right before warmups actually happen. Um, I'd be taking a cold shower right before and that's that to me like just like the the therapeutic like side of things and the benefits are to me it's so game changer it, it really truly is so how do you respond to different temperatures like 40 degrees versus 34 degrees versus 50 degrees <laughs> yeah i would say like you could definitely tell like when you go in the forge versus like the difference of like you're like laying down versus sitting. Like I would say like there's a there's relevancy, I think. I think with like the forge, since you don't like and and, and the, every every cold tub is different, right? So like the facility ones, they're like, you know, I, I think it's like I forgot the company name of them, but they have like those big ones where you can like sit on the side or whatever, or like on the steps and stuff. So like you get more of your, like your under your armpits and like the, you know, your pressure points and everything like that. So, so when I go in the forge, I just like make sure I open up my, my arms and like make sure like everything. So I think it's funny because I usually like laugh when I kind of go in it because, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Right. So like, you're just kind of like moving around in it and people, and like, you would never think you want to keep moving around in 30 degree water. Like, you know what I mean, you want to sit still and get it done with. Right. But like, you know, you got to, you know, like, you know, I think the first 15 to 30 seconds, like you kind of want to keep moving in the sense of like little increment movements just to like hit all the areas of your body. And then, um, and then you kind of stay still a little bit, but I always try to keep my like fingers moving and my toes. Um, but I would say like it for a temperature wise, I think you definitely can tell when, um, <laughs> but the thing is like, it's like you, you definitely can tell but in regards of like when i first started i had it like at because i when um i forgot who delivered it their name but i said what, what's a good temperature to keep it at and they're like well if you keep it at 38 um it was something with like just a random number like how uh, typical people typically keep it at 38 or whatever and i was just like okay so i kept it at 38 and I was like, ah, I probably should put up to 41 for my first time or 40 or whatever. And I got in and it, it was really cold and there was ice on top and, or like, uh, there's like, like little like increments of ice or whatever. And, you know, I did it and I'm like, okay, like let's try tomorrow at like 35. And the difference of like ice, I think too, on the, when it like close to the top and you hit, my thing is like the psychological part about it. That's that was the biggest part. Cause like, I, I have like pictures of like how, like it's like all up around my chest, like the, the ice and everything like that. And I'm like, to just go in it, you gotta like, kind of like work your way. So you don't sit on a piece of ice. Right. So like, you just kind of like go in it and all of a sudden like it comes back up and it's all around your chest. So that psychological thing, you kind of just start laughing in a way. Cause you're just like, this is awesome. Cause you're just like, you're around all this ice and everything. So I think the psychological part about it, I think you it, it's it's a little bit like maybe timid to get in because when you see all the ice floating on top versus like maybe like 40 41 there there isn't as much so i think like when it's down to like 30 to 31 32 degrees and you have all this ice on top you already know it's going to be a challenge because like you have that um like that visual aspect versus not so same thing happens to me um same thing happens to joe rogan David Goggins tells Joe Rogan, there is nothing that will make you question everything about your life like cold water. <laughs> it's so true. It's yeah. so true. 100%. I 
hundred percent. And that's the thing mean? where you have like you have pieces of ice and stuff like that, and they're like thick pieces of ice too sometimes. And uh, it's so funny when like you just break them apart and stuff like that. But now a little I... bit about ozone because the uh, last time yeah. we met, you told me you were a big fan of ozone, and I'm like, okay, Tyler, we're gonna upgrade your ozone. We get you more flow. We're gonna get you yeah. more ozone. Now you've been at it for I don't know a couple weeks maybe. Um, do you notice any difference? I feel like it's just just knowing the benefits of ozone in general. I think you like it's you know it's great for your body. Like I'm not like a scientist on ozone, but I've used it in so many different ways. So like I've used like ozone saunas before. I have one. Um, I've had like. I've used ozone like for like to breathe in ozone uh, um, for like when you get sick um, and and to have ozone like through the Roscoe like it's it's awesome because like when you go into you know some of these like ice ice baths or like um, you know these cold tubs that's like chlorine and like for me you know chlorine doesn't hit my skin right so like I'm always really kind of like itchy or if I'm going to come out or like, I'll have to like go take a shower after because like my skin just doesn't, it's like really irritable after. And so for me, like when you have ozone and then when you put in more, like I feel great after and like, I don't have to like, you know, I'm clean. Like that's like the cleanest water, you know, it's already, it's like all the bacteria is like gone and everything. And like, I felt, I feel really good when I come out after too, but plus like there's so many benefits with the Ford because plus like you're grounding with it and I'm a huge fan of grounding so um no like when you get out of the forge you feel great man <laughs> you really do <laughs> yep. uh, i would not have built it with chlorine and stabilizers and all the things that uh you have to put into a pool or some of our competitors uh say you need to use and it sounds funny because you know i i like to think i like to fantasize that i'm a tough guy but i'm probably too white or something. I have sensitive skin. It's, it's just something that I've had since I was a kid. And I don't want those harsh chemicals on my skin. So if I'm going to invent an ice bath, which I did, I'm just going to use the ozone and there won't be anything else in there. If I got to, we haven't talked about this much, but if I have to pH adjust, I'll put some seltzer water in there. So just pure seltzer. It's pH 3.5. If I want to bring my pH down a little bit, then I refill with seltzer water. So, and I haven't gotten to a pH kit or anything, but these are experiments that I've been running here at Morosco. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be able to do this every day if I had to use chlorine tabs and stabilizers and chelating agents and all the other stuff to try and keep the water clean. Well, I think that's where it was, I think it was hard for me to like, because I would, when I first started, uh, before I bought my forge, I would be going into these like cold, like cold baths and like or ice baths and everything. And like, like the, like the foam, like with the chlorine and stuff, when it's like, when you have the jets on and stuff, like, and like, there's just even like the smell, like, and like all that stuff, like it just like, and I, I, maybe some people like don't mind it or like it, you know, whatever. But like, for me, like, it was just one of those things where it kind of like, it didn't turn you off because like you knew, cause I like, I was looking up all these benefits and everything. And like, you knew all the benefits, but you're just like, you know, it, it was just tough. It was actually really hard to go in it, but like, but same with like the ozone smell and, you know, like I, I'm, I'm so accustomed to it from like using different ozone um, products in general. So, but plus like getting into grounding and how like, it's all like, it's all in one, like it's a whole package deal. And um, no, it, it was so cool. Cause uh, I think one of my, one of my PTs um, or one of my bodywork guys in Dallas, he, uh, he told me about like the, the forge. Um, and he's like, yeah, like Joe Rogan, like, and, and I'm a huge fan, huge fan of Joe Rogan too. And, and he showed me like, uh, like the one he got. And all of a sudden, like, I looked up like how long he went in there and I'm just watching this video. Like that, like that, I think it's like the 20 minute one or whatever. And I'm just like, man, like he's, you know, this is like, you know, this is gonna be challenging when I get it. Cause I just ordered it. <laughs> you know, so, but it was one of those things where it was such an easy order because I was like, I'm gonna invest in myself, but also at the same time, like you're investing that, you know, a good, you know, clean, healthy product that, you know, you're going to get great results from. And, and 
so many uh, great people that you guys have like worked with and how much they've um, given input to it. It really has the effect and an influence like on professional athletes and you know, I'm sure humans in general, but um, it was uh so then when I got it and everything, like I watched this video, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna see how long I can go to. And the longest I've gone is uh, like 12 to 15 minutes. And I could, could I have gone longer, yes or no, but like everything was pretty numb. And I was like, all right, I think that's pretty good. How did you pick the commanders? I think it was just the, the best decision for me at this time. And it was a great opportunity. And I had a lot of colleagues and coaches that, um, that I've worked with in Dallas. Um, and, you know, Dan Quinn being the head coach and with the commanders, but also like just a new organization as well. And like, um, the opportunity for me to be in uh, more of a leadership role for the team and um, to, you know, start a, a foundation from scratch in a way, because it's like we have a new ownership, new GM, new coach, new players, a lot of players coming from different teams in general. Um, we had a really big free agency year and a huge draft. So, I mean, it was kind of like this great opportunity for me to, um, you know, come and build this foundation and a winning culture and um, just, you know, get after plus, um, honestly, uh, it's just been, it's been great, honestly. Like it's, it's so cool to see like different people and how many, you know, different ways people like looked at the game in, in general. And like, you kind of just like, you just kind of meshed everything together and, and like, you know, make it as one. And that's so cool to do. And like to build your standard of what you, you want, you know, and, um, and to do that with my experiences and my experience in Dallas was great. You know, I, I, I loved the mentorship I've had from so many great people like, you know, Dak Prescott, Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, um, all those guys have been, you know, super great role models for me. And, um, you know, you take all those lessons you learned and, and you put them forth. And I thought that was like one of the awesome, you know, opportunities for me to come here with that. And obviously like, it's, it's great, you know, in my financial situation as well too, um, for me and my family. So, um, it was all, like all a win-win. How did, maybe it didn't come up at all, but how did they approach conditioning, injury prevention, recovery? Is there a new ownership, new GM? Is there a new strategy that goes with taking care of their players? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think it's, 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 a, it's a trend that never stopped. I think it's always an evolution of the game and the science behind the game. And, you know, I think it goes from, you know, using, you know, laser or doing, you know, Norvitek boots and you have your cold tub, you have your hot tub, you have your sauna, you have float tanks, you have hyperbaric chambers. Um, you have, you know, strength staff coaches that, you know, help with like your body and like your, your, your whole, you know, building your craft, you know, and, um, the trainers are there for, you know, even being proactive about maybe your past history and working on different things. If you had, you know, maybe injuries before or being like proactive about those things and, um, you know, keep working on maintenance on your body. And, you know, I think the nutrition program, it's, it's huge to really like dive into that as well. Like, I think, you know, nutrition is such a huge thing in our profession that you really have to, you know, own it and you have to be really disciplined yourself. It's like the same thing, right? Like, you know, do it every day because it, it will affect you. And it has shown like, um, and like once you're and you know, experience different methods and ways to, and it's almost, it's like time increments. Like you gotta like, it's all about timing and, and what you're eating and, and it can get redundant to say like, that's the thing. It's like, it's one of those things where it's just like, it, it's a never, it, and it never stops and there's always like going to be like a new thing or, or a new study coming out and um, so it's always like a pro it's a process that you never want to you always want to have really good humility towards it um and to outlook on like new things but also knowing what your body what's best for your body um and your mind you got any off-season goals i mean you have uh i don't know not even maybe two months left before you got to go to camp. You got any goals? <laughs> nah, I mean, I think, I think just like for me, um, you know, it's, 
it's all about building chemistry at this point for our team. I, I think, and I think a lot of people would say that um, we're in phase three right now. We have two weeks left of OTAs. So building as much chemistry as you can before camp and camp is a great time to build chemistry too. It's just more so like you want to be, you want to be, you want to be at your, you don't want to leave any regret on the table of how much you could prepare before camp. And I think everyone knows that. And so, you know, you're getting all your questions answered or, you know, if you want, if you need to spend more time with the coaches, with the playbook or, or even like the players in general, um, you know, working on or like having like bonding moments and, you know, you know, going out with the guys and just like, you know, just knowing them as a more of a human and knowing where they come from or maybe what their why is, even though that might sound cliche, but you really kind of get to know more about them and, you know, what's their purpose behind all this. So how you can like gel more with them. And, um, and then like, for me, honestly, it's just like building a routine, um, you know, training at, you know, my peak level, um, you know, staying on top of like all my non-negotiables, like how we talked about before, like for me, it's like meditation, you know, going to the Marasco Forge in the morning and, you know, eating clean and, you know, making sure my body's at the best shape that it can be for the season. So. Did the younger guys ever ask you about your crazy hyperbaric ozone, cold therapy, red light <laughs> regimen, whatever you're doing? Yeah. No, I think, um, you know, I, I, I talked to him about it um, when I can, but like when I, when I move everything down in the house, I told him, I was like, you guys got to come over and like, you know check some of this stuff out and if you want to ever like use it you know because I, I i my my goal is to have the guys over and like we can have like some like online dinners here and stuff like that so but yeah no i'm not afraid to talk about it because it's it's a benefit for all of us you know and uh but you know the commander's facility is great i mean they have red light uh they have a red light bed they have a float tank um you know they have a dry sauna um cold tub so like a lot of stuff you can do I just like to have it right next to me. Of course you do. <laughs> uh, but I'm happy to hear that the commanders are, um, you know, they're kind of in the 21st century now we, with the red light, with the dry sauna. It sounds like they're a little more thoughtful about it. We just sold six units to the 49ers because, you know, all the best players were getting them. And then John Lynch called me up and he's like, why don't I have these in my locker room? I'm like, I don't know, John, let's work this out. You know, <laughs> so they, they're yeah. very data driven, you know, they're in Silicon Valley and they always want to have the latest and greatest. So um, yeah, we got to install before their camp. But what I'm really interested in with you is when you have like the whole offensive line over on a game day, you're like, get in, you know, <laughs> before we report and uh, yeah. so we don't feel a difference that will be quite an experiment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I'm definitely uh, ready to like have those guys over and, uh, yeah, you know, just, you know, just experience it. I mean, and sometimes, you know, maybe it's not for them at the right time or whatever, but I think just knowing for me, the biggest part about this whole thing is just like knowing the benefits and what it can do for you. I think that's the biggest part. Cause it's like, you know, you know, I love doing the ice bath and getting out of it and accomplishing it. Yeah. But would you say it's like that first thing on your mind where like, yeah, I really want to do that. You know, I really want to, you know, get in that. But like, it's more so like you want the benefits, you want the effects, you want the, you know, all the things that come with it. But it's more so like you want to, if anything, you want to get through the discipline act where it's like maybe the first like, you know, I don't even know how long it took me, but like, like the first five months, it's like, like, you don't, like, you don't, like, you kind of dread it in a way. You're like, like, you know, like, you know, you got to push yourself to do it. But then once you get in a schedule where it's just like, no, I need that. Like that's, that's part of my success. And that's where it becomes like, it doesn't become a job. It, it becomes more of a routine. And I think once you switch that mindset, like it's one of those things where it's like, you don't really feel that sensation of like, like it hurts. It's painful. It's like, I can't stand it. It's more so like, no, nah, like now I can have a conversation as in like, kind of like how you're like, you like when you talk during it, right. And it's like, you can have that conversation because like you're, it's not like you're comfortable. It's just more so like you're, you can adapt. And I think once your brain and how you handle it, like how you can be the best adaptogen and how our bodies like handle that. Um, and it's, it, it can be a, a great, you know, beautiful thing for you. I do want to ask you, I see Kelsey on Instagram. She went to the biohacking thing. How's she doing? Mm -hmm. She's great. No, she's doing great. Um, yeah, she's doing she her thing in Dallas right now. 
Yeah. Yeah. She's, oh, yeah. We're, she's going to come down in July. Um, no, she's doing really good. Um, but no, even like her, like, um, it's been awesome to see like her evolution of go getting in the forge too. Cause like her first time, like, I think it was like, it was like 45 seconds and then she got out and her second time was like a minute and it was like a minute and a minute or whatever. And all of a sudden it like keeps working up and you get to this, that three minute song or that three to five minute song. And you know, she has all these like videos on Instagram and everything and she just kills it. So, um, it's just, it's so cool that like a person that like never has done that, like never, you know, maybe done cryo or something like that, but like, that's nothing. In my opinion, like I love cryo. I love the benefits of that and everything like that. But to me, it just doesn't compare in, in regards of like how you feel after and like maybe like the longevity of like those effects in regards of the day. Um, but no, just seeing her and, and her evolution upon that, like it was, it was really cool to see. And um, like even her process of how to get through that or like the mental toughness to, you know, stay calm and like have proper breathing through it. And I think that's the biggest part is like, because uh, I think she would like, um, you know, just listen to that song or like a song during it. And, you know, once it gets like halfway point, it's like you don't really realize where you're at for time nor does it matter. You're just waiting for the timer to go out. Right. Like in a sense. And it's, it's so cool. And have you two done it together yet? No, we have not. We might try on this, uh, this one. Um, yep. The one that you sent me. No, it'll be definitely an experience. How about mom and dad back in Wisconsin. Have you got them in an ice bath yet? Yeah. I mean, they, they don't, they don't go full body. Um, you know, they, they'll put their feet in, um, my, I think my brother's gone like to waste, waste in, um, but it, but it's hard for people that don't, that could maybe like, you got to have that resource to do it every day. And, uh, I don't know, sometimes cold, maybe not the, you know, the biggest thing for them or like, they like different, uh, products for different things or whatever. But, um, they, any, anytime they come down and visit me, they always like, they always put their feet in there for like a minute and then they're like, cause you know, their feet hurt from walking around or whatever. So. Um, but maybe you never know. You never know. I find that, um, I'm thinking back to my grandparents, uh, in Maine and they're like, look, I got plenty of cold in my life. I know I don't need to go out and seek hardship <laughs> I lived through the yeah. depression. I lived through the war. Now your parents are younger than my grandparents, you know, but there are generational differences and the hardships that they overcame made it easier for me. Now I live in Phoenix, Arizona. You know, and it never gets cold. I live in this right. dense urban environment. You're not going to see me out, you know, getting the cows into the barn or something like that. Yeah. I seek out the hardships that my parents and my grandparents just had thrust upon them. It's a different age for me. No doubt. No doubt. I feel like that was the biggest thing, like, growing up was just seeing, like, like their work capacity to, you know, and build like a work ethic and like knowing how well that they manage like stress or like manage like different avenues and being adaptable to all of a sudden changes or whatever the case may be. And like, you know, how like my, my grandpa had a family farm and just knowing, you know, what people did on the farm and how, what a, what a job that is, you know, and there is very subtle, subtle very like like no complaints like in my end of like watching that like i have no right to complain like i'm doing like what i like, like how you said like you know it gives it that that fortune but also like just like learning about like their work ethic and how they maneuver and like sudden changes of weather and all that like stuff where it's just like you know also they have to go to the field or they like or something like the cows get out or like whatever the case may be and like how there was never like, you know, a time where like, yeah, like they might be like pissed or whatever if something happens or whatever, but they adapt so fast where it's just like, it's such an act of God where it's like, you know, I think, I think it kind of resonates kind of like with my job a little bit in regards upon like things can happen fast and you got to adapt to change and stuff like that. But, you know, you're working from, you know, sun up to sundown. So it's like, it's a different ball game 
in that perspective, but just knowing upon the work ethic, like, you know, always truly grateful for, you know, the benefit I've had to play sports growing up. And that's not, you know, that's such a privilege. I think like, you know, I think, you know, having that opportunity in general and to extend opportunities that go, you know, I played baseball, basketball, football, and, you know, played, you know, extra leagues and like all that stuff growing up where it's like, you know, you, you, you're so grateful to have those opportunities to, you know, extend, you know, the construct upon like what you like to do, you know? And like, that's where I feel like I fell in love with the game of football and like, you know, kind of to see where you're, where, like where your heart's at and what do you want, what do you really want to go for and what do you want to do? And so I think it's always been a great um, motivator of like how, how much capacity you, you really have. And I think the examples of like my mom and dad of growing up were great for me. And you just, you keep learning as like you not necessarily grow older, but like, as in like, you just live life. So. It's funny. Um, you talk about how you fell in love with football. I grew up 1970s. I was in Pittsburgh. You had to be a Steelers fan. You didn't really have a, a choice, but it was also a great time. And then I kind of lost touch with football. My kids were playing baseball, more of a baseball guy. But now Tyler, so many NFL guys have bought our ice baths. I don't even know who to root for anymore. Like, I don't root for team. <laughs> I, I'm rooting for you, you know? I'm rooting yeah. for the individuals. I want them all to have a good game, except the dang Super Bowl, uh, because I am not a betting man. But knowing that the 49ers had the Morosco Forge in their hotel, it felt like I had money on the game. You know, for the yeah. first time, I was, like, yelling at the TV and stuff. I... I got it. Like how people <laughs> become such crazy fans for what you right. do. Cause I crossed, I don't know, some emotional threshold. <laughs> That's all about me. I should be asking about you, but no, no, no. It's, it's awesome. It's great yeah. to hear. I mean, no, but I think that's like, it was so cool to <laughs> see the Morocco Forge extend. I think like, cause I think I saw it on, it was on Instagram that, that week of the Super Bowl. Yep. And I saw like how the recovery rooms were like, filled with them and I was just like that's so cool to see um see that out there and like you know all those guys like you know Fred Warner and all those guys on the 49ers to do it and uh but also like it's kind of cool to see too like when I saw I believe it was Fred Warner that was on your you interviewed him too yeah um it was cool to see like his mentality about it it was like damn near identical of how he views it in the morning and I how like you to talk to him about it or something because you were no. saying so many of the same things about the hesitation yeah. and the excuses start going through your mind. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. And I think that's like, honestly, I think that's the biggest part. Like to, for me to get to do it in the morning, like it just didn't happen like overnight. Like that, that didn't happen overnight. Like that, that took like a good amount of time, probably like two to three months. So I could actually consistently do it in the morning. And, um, at first it was like four, maybe three to four days a week. I would do it like during the work week. And then for like the days I had off or like the game day, I would do it in the, at night or in the afternoon or whatever. But then like last year, like I consistently did it in the morning for, you know, maybe four to five days. And like, Hey, you have like those two days or whatever. But this year, like I've, since I've been in Washington, like I've been in it every morning, like I can't miss it. Like you can't, but also like when, if there's like any obstacle, that's why I love it when I, when I got it here, Cause there was a period of time where I didn't move it down right away. Cause I didn't have a house yet in Virginia and man, do those like when you don't have it in front of you and you're running behind on time a little bit, or you, you know, you got, you, you're in traffic or whatever the case may be. Like your mind starts to be like, Oh, you can't do it. Like you, you, you're going to have to do this. Or like, it just makes up so many different excuses, but also like, it's so cool because like it gets you to the point where like, you know your mind better than like what's going to happen next. So you, you already know where your mind's going to go. Like if you wake up and you're like, you know, he's like, oh man, like you already know where your mind's about to go. So it's like, you want to be like more, not necessarily fast acting, but just that acknowledgement about it and how you can perceive things in a better, clear sight upon life in general about like, are, you know, like for intrusive thoughts versus more real, like, um, in, intended thoughts for example, like it's truly like a blessing in it 
obviously there's a challenge in itself, but like the blessing from it, like if you really are aware of like, like your mind and your conscious mind, you really do, um, I think, you know yourself better now, like doing it. So, um, no, but so many great benefits and it was so cool to see like another person like have that kind of same, same results and the same, uh, um, like a detail attention wise to like their own mind. Um, that was, that was a really cool interview. Cause I was like, no way. Like, man, like, like really? Like, like I'm not the only one, you know, like, you know, like, I, yep. See you time.